Greetings. Welcome to the Title IX Regulations Training. Thank you for being here. My name is Tiffany Eshelman, and I'm the Title IX Coordinator for Baltimore County Public Schools and your facilitator for this training today. The purpose of today's training is to increase your understanding of Title IX, the rights of staff and students, and the responsibilities of school system employees. By the end of this training, you will be able to define Title IX, identify potential Title IX violations, and report potential violations. What is Title IX? Title IX is a federal civil rights law that prohibits any person in the United States from being discriminated against on the basis of sex, including sexual harassment, in seeking access to any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. In May of 2020, the United States Department of Education set forth new regulations for the investigation and resolution of complaints of sexual harassment in, edu in education programs and activities. These regulations include defining the meaning of sexual harassment, addressing how local education agencies, LEAs, respond to reports of sexual harassment, and requiring LEAs to establish a grievance process for the investigation of complaints and issuing disciplinary actions against persons accused of sexual harassment. What is sexual harassment? Sexual harassment in accordance with the new regulations passed in May 2020 is defined as conduct on the basis of sex that includes one or more of the following, quid pro quo, hostile school environment, and sexual violence. Quid pro quo is defined as a BCPS employee or student conditioning the provision of an aid, benefit, or service on an individual's participation in unwelcome sexual conduct. Hostile school environment is defined as unwelcome sexual conduct determined by a reasonable person to be so severe, pervasive, and objectively offensive that it effectively denies a person equal access to the education program or activity. Sexual violence is defined as sexual assault, dating violence, domestic violence, and or stalking. Now that you know how sexual harassment is defined, let's discuss what is considered sexual harassment. For conduct to be considered sexual harassment, it must be severe, pervasive, and objectively offensive. The conduct must deny the person equal access to the education program or activity. The conduct must have occurred within the education program or activity. For the conduct to not be considered sexual harassment under Title IX, it must not have occurred within an education program or activity, for example, at home, and it must not have denied equal access to the person to the education program or activity. Sexual harassment under Title IX also includes sex-based discrimination and online sexual harassment. What is sex-based discrimination? Sex-based discrimination occurs when a student or staff member is denied or limited in the ability to participate in or benefit from BCPS services, activities, or opportunities on the basis of sex to include sexual orientation and gender identity. Examples of sex-based discrimination include mocking a person's appearance as more suited to a person of the opposite sex, or intentionally using the wrong pronoun to identify a transgendered individual. Online sexual harassment must meet the same definition and standards as sexual harassment that occurs in person. Examples of this include the use of computer or internet networks owned or operated by school, or use of a personal device during class time to perpetuate online harassment. What is the result of sexual harassment, sex-based discrimination, or online sexual harassment? The result is denied equal access to the education program or activity. Examples of denied equal access 
are a student avoiding the bus route, an employee avoiding the break room, and a student having difficulty concentrating because of sexual harassment. Where does sexual harassment have to occur for it to be subject to a Title IX investigation? Sexual harassment must have occurred within a BCPS education program or activity in which BCPS exercises substantial control over to be subjected to a Title IX investigation. This can include any school event, such as employment, extracurricular activities, athletics, performances, and community engagement or outreach programs. This can include any location in which a school event has taken place, such as remote virtual learning, school bus or school related vehicle, and off campus on a telecommunication access device or service provider owned by or under control of BCPS. Who does Title IX protect? Title IX applies to schools, local and state educational agencies, and other institutions that receive federal financial assistance from the United States Department of Education. Because BCPS is the recipient of federal funding, we are obligated to comply with Title IX regulations. Repercussions if we do not comply with Title IX could include the denial of the federal funding. Title IX does not just provide rights for students. Title IX protects all students and staff or students and staff who are attempting to participate. BCPS employees have an obligation to report conduct that is perceived to violate a BCPS policy or Title IX. As employees are obligated to do so, failure to report can result in disciplinary actions up to and including dismissal. When do employees have to report? Employees must report when they have actual knowledge of an incident. A BCPS employee has actual knowledge of a Title IX allegation if notice is given to them or they witness it. Once a BCPS employee has actual knowledge, they must respond to the allegation promptly and in a reasonable manner. A BCPS employee must not wait to respond and report the allegation or select not to report based on their own opinion of the incident. What do you do if you experience or witness sexual harassment? Report. BCPS encourages all students, parents, and community members to report conduct that is perceived to violate Title IX or a BCPS policy. BCPS requires all staff to report this conduct. How do you report? You could reach out to the Title IX coordinator directly, reach out to your school-based administration, or reach out to the Equal Employment Opportunity Office. Who can report? Any current student or employee can report. What happens once a report is made? Once a report is made, the Title IX coordinator will reach out to the complainant to discuss the allegations and next steps including the filing of a formal complaint, which triggers the grievance process. If I report, will there be disciplinary actions? No, retaliation is illegal. What is retaliation? Retaliation is the adverse treatment of an individual because the individual has made a sexual harassment complaint, opposed sexual harassment, or cooperated with an investigation. No BCPS employee or student shall retaliate in any way against a person for making a complaint, testifying, assisting, participating, or declining to participate in any manner in an investigation or complaint proceeding. Persons who engage in retaliation will be subject to the appropriate and applicable disciplinary process. This concludes our Title IX regulations training. Should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me via phone at 443-809-7619 or email at title IX at bcps.org. Title IX resources to include the student grievance process 
and other Title IX documents can be found on the BCPS homepage. Thank you for your time and your participation.